Hello and welcome to my third lecture in electrochemistry. Today we're going to learn how to balance redox reactions using two methods. Of course these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. Um, hopefully you're keeping track of your progress in mastering these materials. Um, they form the basis for the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. Um, We've looked at oxidation numbers, and we can use them to balance chemical equations um, if a simple inspection process uh, won't work for us. Uh, the technique takes advantage of the concept that the total number of electrons uh, lost on the oxidizing side of the reaction must equal the total number of electrons gained uh, on the reduction side of the reaction. Um, <coughs> We have an example here where we're going to try inspection, but failing inspection, we're going to use an oxidation number uh, method. So hydrogen sulfide is an unpleasant uh, constituent of sour natural gas. It's burned off at the wellhead because it's not commercially viable to remove it uh, through other means. Uh, when it's burned, it, it's converted into sulfur dioxide and water, and they want us to write a balanced chemical equation for it. So here's the skeleton reaction. I'm going to uh, skip, I could probably solve it through an inspection, but I'm going to skip past that to demonstrate how to uh, uh, employ oxidation numbers to do so. So here I've assigned oxidation numbers to everything. Of course, hydrogen's got a plus one, generally. The sulfur here is minus two to balance with the two hydrogens. Oxygen is uh, in its atomic state. I, I recognize it's bound up in a diatomic molecule, but it, it's still a neutral atom with an oxidation state of zero. Hydrogen is plus one. Oxygen uh, is minus two. Um, oxygen is minus two, and there's two of them. So the sulfur must be plus four uh, to cancel out uh, the oxygen and give a zero net oxidation number for the molecule. You'll see that the sulfur is going from minus two to plus four. So notionally, it's losing six electrons for every H2S molecule. The oxygen is going from 0 to minus 2. So for every O2, and that's for every individual oxygen atom. So for every O2 molecule, it's actually gaining 4 electrons. Okay? And again, the number of electrons gained must be balanced with the number of electrons lost. So we use multipliers. We multiply the uh, what amounts to the reduction by 3, and we multiply the oxidation by 2, so that 12 electrons are gained in this half reaction and 12 electrons are lost in this half reaction. And we use those multipliers as the coefficients in the reactants. 3 becomes the coefficient of the oxygen. 2 becomes the coefficient for the hydrogen sulfide. When we do that, that begins our process of balancing the equation. Now I have two sulfur atoms going in, so I have to add a 2 in front of the sulfur dioxide on the product side to balance out the sulfur. I've got four hydrogens going in, so I have to add a two in front of the water to ensure I also have four hydrogens coming out. And then I think if we look at it, you've got six oxygen atoms going in and one, two, three, four, five, six oxygen, oxygen atoms coming out, so the overall equation is balanced. Here's another example. The hypochloride ion, hypochloride ion is found in household bleach. And it will react with itself to form a chloride ion and a chlorate ion. And again, this is a disproportionation reaction. The, the, the chlorine is being both oxidized and reduced. So here's the skeleton reaction, and these are our oxidation numbers. And again, from left to right, oxygen is minus 2, and the charge in the particle is minus 1, so the chlorine must be plus 1. Oxygen is minus 2, charge is minus 1 on the uh, 1 minus on the ion, therefore the chlorine must be plus 1. Here oxygen is minus 2 and there's 3 of them for a total oxidation state of minus 6. The charge in the particle is minus 1, so the chlorine must be plus 5. And then finally here we've got a, a bare chloride ion, its oxidation number equals its ion charge, so minus 1. So in the case of this first hypochloride ion, we're going from plus 1 to minus 1, uh, we're gaining two electrons for every uh, hypochloride ion. In the case of the second hypochloride ion, we're losing four electrons uh, per uh, hypochloride ion because we're going from plus one to plus five. 
So again, we need to balance the electrons gained in the one half reaction by the electrons lost in the other half reaction. And we do so by employing multipliers, a two in front of the first ion and a one in front of the second ion. And again, we use those multipliers as our coefficients. Two hypochlorite ion reacted with another hypochlorite ion to, get, to give us our uh, chlorate ion and our chloride ion. And that starts the balancing process. Let's see if we can finish balancing it. We've got three chlorides going in. We've got two coming out. But if I put a two in front of this chloride ion, now I have three coming out. And I've got one, two, three oxygen going in and three oxygen coming out. So the oxygen is always also balanced and I'm finished. Um, I've got uh, uh, several more examples, but I, I think I'll just pause on them. I'll get you to pause on them and, and perhaps write them down and try them on your own. So here's another two. And again, simple uh, oxidation number analysis um, uh, and, and following this balancing process should be sufficient for you to balance these. And here's a further two. Um, you're also responsible for a second method of balancing uh, redox reactions. And um, typically, uh, this type of balancing is limited to environments where you're dealing with acidic solutions. Um, it also works in basic solutions, but basic environments are beyond the scope of this course. Um, it, it's quite an extensive method, uh, and, and I'll show you the, the stepwise process uh, here in a minute. Um, because these are in aqueous, uh, acidic, and basic solutions, we're often uh, in a position to include water molecules, uh, protons, and hydroxide ions in the mix, in the balancing mix. And these typically aren't shown as part of the, the question. Um, you're, you're told to balance it in an acidic environment, so that, that's your cue to add protons, hydrogen ions, or to add water, water molecules as need be to balance the equation. Um, and um, like I say, it's a fairly elaborate process, so we have to come up with a system of rules to follow, sort of a, a recipe if you'd like, to ensure we can appropriately uh, include these, uh, these species. And again, we're only responsible, we've limited the course to balancing these reactions in acidic environments only, not in basic environments. We refer to this as the half reaction method or the ion electron method. And again, um, the, the, the key word in the question is balance the following equation in an acidic environment. That's when you move away from the oxidation numbers. Indeed, that process won't work to balance these um, because you're forced to add protons, because you're forced to add water molecules that you don't even see in the question. You, you have to develop this methodology to determine how many of each that you, uh, you have to include. Uh, so here's an example. Um, uh, rather, here's the recipe. First of all, you, you're given an equation and you separate it into two half reactions. And then you balance what are called the key atoms. It's a fancy word for any atom that is not oxygen or hydrogen. And then you balance the oxygen by adding water into the equation. And again, the equation you're given will not include water, but you're, you're, you're called upon to add it in yourself. And you do so to balance the oxygen. And then you balance any hydrogen that might be present by adding protons, by adding uh, hydrogen ions. And then you balance charge uh, by adding electrons. And again, I'll do a couple of examples. This is sort of a long recipe, but after we... we introduce you to it. We'll do a couple of examples. And then uh, once you've done that to both half reactions, so you followed steps one through five for each of the two half reactions, then you balance electrons between the two half reactions. And typically that's going to call upon you to use multipliers for each of the two half reactions. Then you cancel uh, electrons and quite often you cancel out spectrate data. So quite often you're able to cancel out some of the water going in and out of the equation and some of the protons, some of the hydrogen ions going in and out of the equation. And then you add the two half reactions together and they should add up to a balanced chemical equation. Um, and, and, and do a check just to ensure that uh, yeah, you've got it right. These can be very complex questions and this first example will, will sh show you what I mean. So balance the following equation in an acidic environment. And here's the equation. So again, the first step, pull down uh, 
one of the key species. And I'm going to pull down the, the manganese here and here. And that looks like this. And then the next step was to balance the key atoms. And you notice I got one manganese on the left and one manganese on the, on the right. We use the word key elements, but really we're talking about anything that's not oxygen or hydrogen. So manganese is balanced. The next step is to balance this oxygen, and you balance it by adding water. So I've got four oxygen going in. I've got zero oxygen coming out. So I have to add four water to the right side of this equation. Now the oxygen's balanced. The next step is to balance this hydrogen. You'll see because I've added water, I've got eight hydrogen coming out and none going in. So I have to balance this hydrogen by adding eight hydrogen, eight protons, to the left-hand side of this equation. So now the hydrogen's balanced. The final step in balancing this half of the, the system is to add protons. And you'll see that the overall charge on the left here is minus 1 and positive 8 for a total of positive 7. The total charge on the right is positive 2. So I need five negative charges. I need five electrons on the left to balance charge here. So we've added that here. Now we'll pull down the second half reaction, the C2H42 minus and the CO2. And we'll balance key atoms. In this case, the key atom is carbon. I've got two going in on the left and one coming out on the right. So I need to add a coefficient of two in front of the carbon dioxide to balance carbon. My next step is to balance the oxygen. And you'll see I've got four oxygen coming out and none going in. So I have to add four water to the left. Now I've got four oxygen going in and four oxygen coming out. Next step is to balance hydrogen. And you'll see I've got one, two, three, four, plus eight. I've got 12 hydrogen going in and none coming out. So I have to add 12 protons to the right-hand side of this equation, balancing the hydrogen. Finally, I have to balance charge by adding electrons. You'll see the charge on the left is 2 minus. The charge on the right is 12 plus. So to balance uh, charge on either side, I have to add 14 electrons on the right-hand side. Now charge is balanced. And you'll notice that I, the electrons were added to the same side of the protons when I balanced this half reaction. And you notice above here the electrons were added to the same side as the protons, and that's typical. If you're adding electrons to the opposite side of the protons, um, it's not adding up. Something You're not doing it right. So let's bring both of these half reactions down, and let's take a look at them. Because the, you have five electrons going into the what is the reduction half reaction. You have 14 electrons coming out of the oxidation half reaction. So we have to multiply these two half reactions to ensure that the electrons balance. So I'm going to balance the first half reaction, uh, what is the um, reduction half reaction, by multiplying by 14. And I'm going to balance the oxidation half reaction by multiplying by 5. And when I do that, I get uh, some uh, pretty large coefficients. But the important piece is this. I've got 70 electrons going into the reduction and 70 electrons coming out of the oxidation. And if you remember, I started this lecture by saying the number of electrons going into one half reaction has to equal the number of electrons coming out. So now the electrons are going to balance on both sides of this equation. And in point of fact, some of the water is going to balance. i got 56 coming out here and 20 going in here. So that 20 is going to cancel with 20 of these. And I've got 60 protons coming out of this half reaction and 112 going in here. So those 60 are going to cancel with 60 of these. In the end, once I do all that cancellation, this is what my balanced chemical equation looks like. And you'll see it's pretty elaborate. But let's do a check. I've got 14 manganese going into the system and 14 coming out. I've got uh, 52 plus 20. I've got 72 hydrogen atoms going in on the left-hand side. And I've got 36 times 2, which is 72 hydrogen atoms coming out on the right-hand side. I've got 14 times 4, which is 56 oxygen going in. And I've got 36 plus 10 times 2 is 20, 56 oxygen atoms coming out on the right. Finally, the charge on the left. The charge on the left is uh, 14 uh, negative, and 20 negative is uh, 24 negative, and 52 positive. 52 minus 24, that looks like it's 28 positive charges on the right. And on the left, I got 14 times 2, which is 
uh, 28 positive charges on the right. So this thing is, in fact, balanced. It's ugly, but it's balanced. And because these things are so complex, it's important you follow the, um, the scheme we've devised uh, carefully. Let's do one more. Balance the following equation in an acidic environment. So I have sulfur and iodine reacting to form the sulfate ion and the iodide ion. So let's pull down half the reaction. In this case, let's pull down the sulfur. The key atoms, the sulfur itself, is balanced. There's one going in, one coming out. The oxygen has to be balanced. I got four coming out and none going in. So I have to add four water to the left-hand side of this equation. Um, however, that introduces eight hydrogen on the left-hand side of this equation. So I have to add eight protons to the right-hand side of this equation to balance things out. Finally, I have to balance charge. The charge on the left is 2 minus. The charge on the right is 2 minus and 8 plus, which is 6 plus. So I have to add 8 electrons on the right to balance charge. So we've completely balanced this first half reaction. This is the oxidation half reaction. I know that because electrons are coming out. Now let's pull down the iodine, the I2 on the left and the I1 minus on the right. In terms of key elements, I've got two iodine going in and only one coming out. So I have to double the iodide ion coming out. There's no oxygen and there's no hydrogen involved in the system. So no water and no protons required. However, the charge on the left is zero and the charge on the right is two minus. So I have to add, add two electrons on the left to balance charge. Uh, so the reduction is consuming two electrons. The oxidation is generating eight. So I'm going to have to use multipliers here to balance out those electrons. I'm going to balance the first equation just by one, and I'm going to balance this, multiply the second equation just by four. In the end, they're going to look like this. And now you'll see the oxidation is generating electrons, and the reduction is consuming those eight electrons. And those will cancel out. Once they cancel out, we'll add up the rest, and our overall equation looks like this. And let's check it to ensure we're right. We have one sulfur atom going in, one sulfur coming out. We've got four times two, eight hydrogen going in, eight hydrogen coming out. We've got four oxygen going in and four oxygen coming out. We've got eight iodine atoms going in and eight coming out. The charge on the left here is two minus. The charge on the right here is two minus, eight plus, and eight minus. The 8 plus and 8 minus cancel out, and the charge is 2 minus. So the, the charge balance is left side and right side. These are long questions. I've, I've done two. I've got uh, one, uh, two more for you. I'll let you work through those on your own. Follow the methodology, and um, really there's no reason why you shouldn't master it with enough practice. Thank you. We'll see you next time when we talk about building reaction series, and I hope you found today's lecture helpful.